Dennis Morris, the Mungoose, is no small town guy when it comes to boxing. Born and raised in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, but moved to Milwaukee with his mom as a teenager and has been boxing for over 15 plus years. Many like myself thought boxing was on the decline, a lost art. But according to Medina, Dennis's trainer, professional boxing is on the rise. I lost my boxing license for three years and made a comeback. Now, I'm a four-time boxing champion. And why? All because uh, things will happen in New York. They ain't want me to fight this Sean Moneyham boxer. For his debut, I was gonna be the one put him down and they realized that. And they came to my hotel and they realized they had the wrong dentist. The dentist they wanted is the ones that the one that I knocked out. And and they realized they flew the wrong one in. What I look for in a champion boxer is number one is discipline, self-discipline, especially in their own personal life first. And then the sport comes second. You know, I want them to understand that if the personal life's intact, that the career will last much longer because they have, they have respect for life, they have respect for the parents, they have respect for themselves. And then I can work with them and I know they're gonna get far in life. Dennis is a hard trainer. He gets up early in the morning, he trains. He pretty much put training in front of everything. At the same time, he do work his schedule around that he can do other things, but he goes out to the lake and he runs up stairs and everything. And it's something that he loved doing. It ain't like a hobby or um, that he have a choice or not. It's just something that he's dedicated to doing as a fighter and a boxer. And he's a good fighter. However, we did feel that he was outgrowing his trainers and that we needed to find him a new trainer. And that's what we did for 2018. So went up to the commission office, made weight at 176, and went downstairs, the commissioners, with everybody, with the fighter and with his manager and closed the door while I was downstairs and made a deal. So the fighters came downstairs and told me, you ain't gonna be fighting that night. I was like, why? He was like, they in the room making deals. I was like, okay, we'll wait till tomorrow. So I waited till tomorrow, came downstairs from the hotel room, he had all the fighters that was out of town right there, and all of a sudden he was like, Mongoose, you ain't gonna be able to fight tonight. And I asked him why. He was like, the doctor said something wrong with you. I was like, it ain't nothing wrong with me. Y'all just don't want me to fight this guy because it was his debut, and y'all realized y'all flew the wrong one in. So, Flew the one one in, and while they was talking to me, they was already online calling the fight I had won, Dennis Pellison. They was calling him already, having him flying. So I realized, I realized that I wasn't gonna fight that night. And all because of my skills level and all because I was in shape, it made them change their mind of uh, that fighter. And also that fighter had more amateur fights, more amateur fights, like a hundred and some amateur fights, than me. I had three, he had a hundred and some. So why would that guy be scared of me? Why I put a threat on them and they didn't want to give me that chance. So I just let it be and tried to fight. 
and they would spend my license when I went back home. It affected him where he totally shut down, where he couldn't fight for three years of his career. Um, he, when I say shut down, the, his biggest supporters are me and my husband and of course his family. And he just didn't come around for three years. However, he did continue to train. You know, I met him about 15 years ago. And I remember I met him at a Milwaukee Rumble. And he came up to me and says, Coach Medina, someone tells me that you're a good coach. And I want to be better. And that's why I always, I always was in my whole career. I travel all over the world with boxing. I, I train with some of the best trainers. The guys that train De La Hoya, the guys that train Manny Pacquiao. And so for me to get better is to be around those kind of individuals, to surround myself against other champion coaches and stuff like that. So I see that in him, the drive to want to be around people who are positive. And so there's a lot of resemblance between me and him. And always hungry to learn, always hungry to get to, get to the next step. And never, he never says, I know everything. And I feel the same way. As, as, a, as, a, as a trainer, I, I tell everybody I'm 10% I'm trainer and 9% student. I'm always a student of boxing, and that's what Dennis is, he's a student of boxing. He wants to know every aspect of the business, including the skills. When that happened, I couldn't fight nowhere. I couldn't fight out across the sea, I couldn't fight in Madison. I lost so many fights. Now this fighter got 20-some fights, and I've just been holed back for three years while he's still fighting. The only thing I could do is just sit back and watch uh, fights on YouTube. And I started thinking like, hey, I ain't no quitter, I ain't finna give up. So I did. So once that happened, I was like, I got to find somebody from New York, someone close to help me with everything. So I had got on the computer on Facebook and I looked up, I hit an H. Hassan came up, and all of a sudden, I had wrote Hassan. I was not, I need some help. I told him what's wrong. I, I ain't lied to him or anything. So he's like, okay. He's like, son, I'm finna fly you in. So I was like, okay. I flew in the next following week, I flew in. And once I got off the plane, he said, he took me right to the boxing gym and spar. He, he took me right through the gym to spar. He didn't talk that much. He thought I was gonna need some work and he realized he saw what I had and he knew something was in me that what God gave me, that was a gift. So I put in work at the gym every day and all the fighters love me there and respect me in New York. So I kept on training, kept on training. Years ago passed, another years ago passed. I was coming back home, went back up there, went back home, came back up there. So the last following year, I went, he took me and him went to a specialty doctor out in New York. And all of a sudden, you know what they told me? They told me, hey, it ain't nothing wrong with you. They just didn't want you to fight that fighter because he had a lot of people coming from New York. It was basically like they money man. He had a lot of people coming from New York, Irish, uh, everybody. So that's basically the reason why they didn't want me to fight the fighter, because they know that I was going to put him down. Dennis has such a great future, and Medina shares how he plans to execute with precision and style to take Dennis to a national level, pursuing HBO. We want to fight on a big show. We want to get him to that point, and you know, at the age he's at, we have to be real careful and that's why he comes to me. I'm a very technical coach, I'm a very intelligent coach when it comes to keeping his mindset, uh, always focused to the goal and not taking eyes off the goal. And that's, if he wants to be on HBO Showtime, that's our goal in five years.
Within five years, hopefully. Maybe next year, maybe two years. But we want to get them there. So when the doctor told me, I went back home, did the, to another doctor, and they told me the same thing. And I had to go back to New York, and he was, her son told me, only way you can fight, the commission said you're going to have to lose weight. So I was like, okay. I played football, baseball, not get tired, and I was still training every day. So they said I'm going to have to come down pounds. They said I'm going to have to come down pounds. So I came down 13 pounds from 189 to 176 in three days. So the day of the fight was the day of the weigh-in. I made weight. I couldn't eat that, I couldn't drink that because it felt like I was already full. So what I did, it was two hours before the fight, so I went back to the hotel, got a little sleep. I had to get right back up and I had to go get in the ring. Won all rounds. I had to fight like Rocky. I don't ever fight like that, but I had to fight like Rocky that night. Won all rounds. The end of the, end of the fourth round had a minute and 30 seconds left. The guy just called a lucky hit because the refs came between me and a guy just throw. So now, so now I was like, okay, went back home. I told her son, I was like, I appreciate, I think everything that you did for me, because it went for him, I wouldn't be in this position where I'm at right now. So show my love to him, thank him for helping me. And I went back home. For that 90 days, I was doing a lot of thinking, what I want, what I'm going to do. That type of stuff make you think. And to then, I ain't never trust nobody forever. I ain't never trust nobody. And I said I was going to do my own thing. I'm going to make everybody want me. So from that 90 days, I had... I had a lot of days to think about what I'm gonna do, so and that and it did work. So now, now I'm a uh, you know I went on a seven screen knockout, seven screen knockout, and a seven screen knockout, and. Now, everybody, they looking at me. They looking at me. Oh, who's Mongoose? I'm that, I'm that one. They trying to stop his career. But I didn't let it happen. I didn't let it happen because Mongoose is not a quitter. My mom didn't raise no quitter. She told me, son, you got to go out there and get what you're going to get, do not be acquitted because you're going to let them win. This other fighter in Colorado, and the promoter asked me to sign with him. I said, no, I ain't going to sign with nobody. And I was certain when I said that, I know I'm going to have to fight because uh, it was his fighter. I wasn't used, used to the atmosphere out there. so. I know he, the guy I had fighting in Colorado, he won the first round, a little baby punches. But think about it, I had five more rounds to think about what I'm gonna do. And I had, to, I had a minute to think about on my break after that first round, I had a minute to think about what I was gonna do real quick. So in my head, I had to switch, Stella being fast, I had to switch everything up and hit like a brick. The guy I had fought, he wished 
he was never in a ring with me because I beat him, I beat him bad. I, I dropped him, broke his nose. They still didn't stop the fight. Bleeding all over the place, they still didn't stop the fight. Commission, everybody got up in the back, got from the table because it was a bloodbath up there. The refs said he slipped and it was a clean hit. So I was not okay. And I definitely, in my head, I was like, I'm not gonna win this. But I'm gonna beat him like I won. So that's what I did. Broke his nose, broke his eye psychic, closed both his eyes. And around 12 o'clock, he went to the hospital and, but I still lost only because I didn't sign with the promoter. I don't think that's right, but from this day now, all the fighters that I lost by, they're gonna remember me. And all the time they, the promoters, out of Colorado, New uh, New York, uh, commissioner. What these guys said now? I got four titles, and they don't got none. Counting all the um, the new business part side of boxing, which is political sometimes. Sometimes it's not even fair to the athletes what's going on. They can win a fight, and sometimes they're not given the fight. So there's a little bit of setback. So there's a lot of times they're gonna feel almost desperate to want to walk away. But again, what drives them could be maybe their dad used to box, their grandpa used to box, or maybe since he was a child, this is what he wanted. I mean, that's what, when I was born, I knew I wanted to do boxing. So no one's gonna stop me having my gym and my, and my, my career in boxing, and that's why I'm here today. So when I look at athletes and they want this, I tell them it is a sacrifice. It's a very lonely life. And girlfriends are not, are not almost in the picture anymore. You know, I mean, families, Christmas are missed. Birthdays are missed. Sometimes special moments of somebody's wedding is missed. Dennis is more than a boxer. He's a business strategist and supports local causes such as youth organizations, breast cancer awareness, and much more. His safeguarded plan includes a sportswear line of clothing as well as recently launching his very own Heavy Hitters Management Production Company. Watch out for Dennis on HBO because that's where he and his team has set their punches high to create a lasting future in boxing. Every fight, Dennis would like to donate to someone or give back to something. So every fight that he have, he makes sure that he do an event. In February the 10th, 2018, it was the kickoff of Heavy Hitters Promotions, which is a family promotion company, basically to support Dennis and his career, to move his career along without uh, having interruptions with other promoters. Um, because the state of Wisconsin is limited to the promotion companies that are available to Dennis. So now we have our own promotion company called Heavy Hitters Promotion. And so during February the 10th, we had our first kickoff of the promotion company and we had, and Dennis decided to donate 50% of his purse to charity and his charity of choice was cancer, breast cancer awareness. Mm -hmm. So uh, he was able to donate that and he does it freely from the heart. So there's no grudging there with giving his money away. So at um, other events, he do different things, but this particular event was the cancer awareness for breast cancer. I teach a lot about losing, even before winning. Some, some gyms talk about just winning, but I talk about losing because the loss is part of the growth. And if they can grasp that the loss is a life lesson and you have learned from those lessons, then we never lose. So we're always talking about that, you know, the struggle and the losses in a, in a gym or in a fight are no different than the losses in, in the losses in, in life. So if you can deal with what goes on in life and understand how to overcome loss, the loss in the ring is, is no different. 
will come out will come out victorious. Inspiration yeah. that can share with a, a, a non-athlete who somebody's maybe considering doing boxing is that they have to commit to the lifestyle of a boxer. And we're not normal. Boxers are not normal. They don't eat the normal food. They don't have the normal sleeping habits. They don't. It's pretty much like a lonely life. They don't have the normal friends. Friends have to really give up the time and only show up to the shows and, and support them there and not feel like they've been left out. So what I can say to them is that if you have that, dri that drive to kind of live a lonely life, maybe 10, 15 years, then you're gonna see a title. He's a, he's a ticketed, he's a character. He loves being in front of the audience. He loves putting a show on for the people. He's really a people champion as far as I'm concerned. He wants everybody to walk away from the show happy, fulfilled and saying, I wanna see this guy again. And he's, he's very, very intelligent when it comes to promoting himself. So I, I consider him a really intelligent boxer. His number one goal is to please his fans. He has a lot of fans. Um, he will, let's say, he will, um, he will stay in a hotel as we coming out. If we're doing um, some kind of networking over there. He will stay three hours just taking pictures with his fans. No matter what I say, he be going like my fans. <laughs> so I would say I'm, I threaten him, I leave him, and he still won't come. He, his fans mean a lot to him. Um, another good thing about Dennis is that he loved working with Special Olympics. So he do a lot with Special Olympics. He shows up at the bowling, all their e events. Um, so he and I have a special needs son, and um, he always want Dennis to come because he know Dennis is a big support, and um, Dennis helps me a lot with him because we go out to Las Vegas once or twice a year, where he also do sparring, and he gets a lot of work in over there, and so everybody loves him. Dennis plays a big role in the creation of his own clothing line. I am dressed up in Dennis's gear. I think I have more outfits than he has because I like it. It's very comfortable gear, and Dennis keeps it at a low price. Rick, um, the guy who produces clothing line, tried to get Dennis to bring it up some so that Dennis is getting a better profit. But Dennis says, no, my fans. I want to keep it low for my fans. So he keeps it at a reasonable price. But as you can see, um, this not is not no patch on. It's actually the made inside the material. So Dennis' face and all his designs is made into the material. So you can iron right over it. Everything easy to wash, easy to iron. Um, I I don't think I go too much without wearing a, something of Dennis with Dennis's face on it. Ain't gonna let nobody stop me or get in my way to stop me. Like I said, I'm gonna keep going forward. I ain't looking back. And all the time the uh, promoters and all the time the commissioners, you can hate me or you can love me. I'm gonna keep going. And I'm gonna be ready for any fighter out there and let them know I'm, I'm that champion. I'm y'all champion. And anybody that went, anybody that went through the same thing I did, I just hope you didn't give up or let them win. Cause boxing is a dirty game, but it's a lot of good people there. And I'm that one that going to make it happen in a good way. You know, so I like to thank all of y'all. You know, I like to thank all of y'all too. And and man, if it wasn't for me boxing in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, it would not be professional boxing in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. It would not be professional boxing in Wisconsin. I'm the one that 
brought it back here. That's why boxing kneels again because of me and the fans and the supporters. And we're going to keep on living it. We're going to keep on living it. The champ is here!